we're doing the brown heart. Okay, and it's parts inside, outside. All right, so we did the outside, but let's do them quick again. This is the area of the right atrium, okay? It's covered, there's a little extension that comes off of it. It's called the right auricle. That's what you see raised up here. Below that is gonna be the right ventricle, left ventricle. This is the area of the left atrium, and it also has a little extension sticking off of it, the left auricle. All right? Heart's kind of divided into four chambers. And we discussed the fact that there are slight indentations between the ventricles, known as the sulcus, interventricular sulcus. And then there are slight indentations between the ventricle and the atrium. That would be the atrioventricular sulcus. And many of the coronary vessels run in those indentations. We also said, for our purposes, that this is adipose tissue, yellow. And just this little cut out here, where the adipose has been removed, and here, that would be the epicardium. That would be the visceral pericardium of the serous membrane that covers the heart. Right. Superior vena cava leading to the right atrium. Inferior vena cava leading to the right atrium, bringing the oxygenated blood back to the heart. Okay. So let's open up now. So now we can see the four chambers, all right? One, two, three, four, right atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle, left atrium. So the blood is coming, all right? Coming back to the heart. So just while we're on the topic of it, there are three vessels. One, two, three, the coronary sinus. It's part of the coronary circulation, so it's discussed in a different video, but one, two, three are bringing deoxygenated blood back to the heart, and it's all deposited here. Now, if you look inside there, you're gonna see some green things, you're gonna see little black dots, you're gonna see a little elevated area. The black dots, wherever you see black dots, there are none here, but wherever you see black dots, that's just indicating that that's the entryway into the vessel. So we don't need to be too concerned with that. We see the vessels, okay? The green things are gonna be part of the conduction system. That's another video, right? Please um, tune into that video very soon. Okay? <laughs> These are conduction system. This little elevated area, that's a little bit of scar tissue. That's actually part of our discussion, okay? So ignore the black dots for now, ignore the green for now. So here's our right atrium. Blood from here needs to pass to here, okay? And it has to pass through a valve, okay? So there are four valves in the heart. One, two, three, and four. Let's get a nice close-up one. That's the most interesting one, right? She believed in me. Blood has to pass through. So there's a valve, it's a unidirectional valve that allows blood from here to move to here. And once it's here, it can't go back. So the door opens, blood goes through, can't go back. All of these are unidirectional. They keep the blood moving forward. These are the cusps, okay? These are the cusps. This is the tricuspid valve, okay? It's three flaps. You can really see, do another close up. See the one, two, three cusps? That's what I mean by three cusps, three flaps. This has three flaps. This has two flaps. Bicuspid, tricuspid. This is now known as the right atrioventricular valve. Right AV valve. Okay. The valve, the cusps are quite large. It is between chambers. So there's a little accessory structures associated with the cusps. You see these little strings, lines, and then you see some muscle tissue, and then you see the wall. These control or hold the cusps in position as blood is moving through, meaning 
these are fairly large cusps. If they were to open and not be attached to anything, they could be, you know, kind of just flapping around. We don't like that sloppiness. These, these muscles, the papillary muscles, will contract, pull on the chordae tendine, which then pull and hold the cusp in position, so it's not flapping around. They control chordae tendine, attached to papillary muscle, attached to the myocardium, the muscle wall, control the position of the cusps as blood is flowing through. So it passes through the valve, fills the ventricle, it's known as ventricular filling, as blood is returning, right, it's gravity, blood is returning. As blood begins to build up in here and it presses on these cusps, are these cusps strong, weak, delicate, what are they? Quite delicate. As soon as blood starts to build up on them, they push open due to the force of the blood and the gravity and the ventricle begins to passively fill with blood. Once it's filled, completely filled, there's gonna be a contraction. Whatever's in here, whatever's left, is gonna be forced into here. The door will shut behind it. And now we have blood in here, and the blood is ready to move to the next spot. Now, it doesn't go from here to here, obviously. It needs to go from here, from here, out through this large vessel to the lung. It's going to go to the lung, or lungs, I should say, the left and the right, to get oxygenated. So the right ventricle pumps blood through the pulmonary trunk out to the lungs. Okay. So again, it's going to be flip-flopped, but there we are. Right, right. And you can see that there is a valve that controls the flow of blood from the right ventricle into the pulmonary trunk. All right. That's another valve. It's a tricuspid valve. We don't call it tricuspid, we call that the pulmonary semilunar valve. One direction, blood goes through, can't go back. And now blood has left the chamber and is in the vessel on its way to the lungs. All right, there's your left pulmonary artery and your right pulmonary arteries. Oh, off so that's to the why the different colors, like you know how like the arteries are usually... Well, this, flipped. like we said before, so this would be the exception yeah. to the rule, right? Most arteries are red, these are blue, because they have deoxygenated blood, but the definition of an artery is carries right. blood away, artery away. This just happens to be deoxygenated blood. All other arteries typically would be painted red. That's what we try to trick you with on the test, right? That's a trick question. Trick question. <laughs> so it goes to the lungs, it gets oxygenated, then has to come back, like we said. Comes back, left pulmonary veins, right pulmonary veins. Veins carry blood back to the heart. These are again of the exception. These are red. All other veins typically are blue. And it brings blood back to the left atrium. And here you can see a nice representation of the auricle. Right? It's a little extension off of the atrium, right? A little extension. You see it here too. A little extension off of the atrium. Blood fills, same idea. You've got two cusps. There's your bicuspid valve, mitral valve, right? This is also held in position by chordae tendinae, papillary muscles that control the chordae, which hold the cusps appropriately. Again, we have passive ventricular filling as blood comes in, pushes open the cusps, the ventricle fills, fills, fills. Contraction, squeeze the rest of the blood in. Blood is here, doors are closed. Now this is gonna contract. And this is gonna send blood out through the aorta, and again, there's another semilunar valve, that's the aortic semilunar valve. It's got three cusps. Out it goes, goes into the vessel, can't go back. Notice the difference between the wall of the left ventricle and the wall of the right. Thinner, 
thicker. This just has to contract and pump blood from here to the lungs. This has to contract and pump blood to every aspect of the body. This is systemic circulation. This is pulmonary circulation. Okay. You see that the wall of the ventricles is slightly roughened, okay, folds and elevations. That's known as the trabeculae carnae. Trabeculae carnae. So, contraction through the valve into the aorta. Ascending, arch, and then it goes back down behind the heart, descending aorta, and then it's going to become other vessels. Like I said, the first two branches, the right and left coronary arteries, brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid, left subclavian arteries, branches of the aorta. This is the trachea, it's part of the respiratory system. I think we have most of our parts. Did we miss anything? Oh yeah, these remnants. So I had mentioned this little scar tissue over here. This used to be called the foramen ovale. You see it here? And you also see it over here. Because what that was is was a hole that went from here through the septum, through the wall, septum, wall, to here. And deoxygenated blood was able to mix with oxygenated blood in the fetal heart. Heart develops, the hole becomes sealed up because we don't want in the adult heart mixing of blood. It becomes the fossa ovalis. That's a remnant. This is also a remnant, ligamentum arteriosum. That was a vessel that connected the pulmonary trunk to the aorta, allowing blood to mix in the fetal heart. But that then becomes scar tissue, a ligament that connects the two and just holds them in position, ligamentum arteriosum. That's another remnant. The picture shows pectinate muscles, little muscle tissue that's in the wall of the atrium. We don't really see it here unless, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, you want to say that this little stuff here represents that. We don't have to, but the picture does have it. Our model really does not. And then the other components of this would be the conduction system, which we have as a separate video, meaning sinoatrial node, internodal pathways, atrioventricular node, bundle of his, bundle branches, or kinchy fibers. That's another video, and you can follow that through, but that's here also. And then the last video that, again, separate video, talks about all of these blood vessels, what's known as the coronary circulation, that supplies all the living cells of the heart with blood. The red ones are bringing oxygenated blood to all the myocardium, all the living cells, the cardiocytes, front and back. And then the blue is collecting the deoxygenated blood and then ultimately they all lead back to the coronary sinus, which dumps the deoxygenated blood back to where we started, into the right atrium. So these are the basic components of the heart, okay? Most of what we see in the illustration. All right, very good.